And welcome back. The lights on just in case it gets a little bit dark, but no clouds in the sky. And yet another surprisingly gorgeous day. As we get closer to winter, it seems more like summer. Almost 70 degrees, some light winds, and very sunny conditions. The question is, might that tap out the tired North Carolina Tar Heels? Meredith Flaherty in goal for Florida and an amazing seven save performance to get them here against Santa Clara. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineups brought to you by Adidas. And in back we have Tracy Ward making her start today. She didn't start in the last game. She was feeling sick sick and of course their freshman star Keisha Bell in the midfield for Florida. We're going to see Sari Yoey the, the goal scorer from the last game and their hero. She's coming in with a bad hit but she's making the start at outside midfield today for Florida and of course up top their two twin towers both 5'11 Danielle Fotopoulos and the freshman Abby Wambach. In goal for North Carolina, no surprise. Siri Mullenix, the hometown kid from Greensboro, North Carolina, was not tested much against Portland, but when she was, she came up big. And in the back for them, their mainstay, Lori Fair, who was the defender of the year for Soccer Times this year, and their junior, Lindsey Stacker, and their freshman, Danielle Borgman, having a great season. In the midfield, on the outside, U.S. Women's National Team player Tiffany Roberts and Lori Schwoy, their go-to player at attacking central midfielder. And up, up top, of course, their three front, Raven McDonald, Cindy Parlo, last year's National Player of the Year, and Meredith Florence. North Carolina getting set to kick it off, and we are underway. The Women's National Championship, North Carolina against Florida. And when these two teams have met, it has not gone the Gators' way, but the last few times closer and closer. This the third round a couple of years ago, a 9-0 victory for North Carolina to knock out Florida. In the second round last year, a 5-0 victory. But this season, as Parlo cannot keep it in play, this season, perhaps the toughest match the Tar Heels have faced all year. It took overtime. And a Laurie Schroy goal seven and a half minutes in to knock off North, to knock off Florida. Florence, the goal scorer in the semifinal match, charging in towards Flaherty, who shepherds that one out for a goal kick. And it's going to be interesting to see North Carolina is going to come out hard in these first few minutes. They come in with a lot of confidence. You're going to see Becky Burley trying to organize her Florida defense, but they come out with a lot of confidence. And of course, we talked about the fatigue factor. They want to get a couple goals in early and get Florida on its heels. Wambach, the freshman to the outside for Bell. Intercepted, McDowell to Florence. Turnover for Topless. Cannot shield that ball away, and here is Lori Fair. And a foul called. Free kick for North Carolina. One thing you were talking about in the semifinals that was not evident from the North Carolina game plan was pushing Fair into the attack. Do you expect Anson Dorrance to try and accomplish that today? Actually, I had a chance to, ch to chat with him yesterday, and I asked him why he wasn't pushing his, his uh, defenders forward when they were... Flipped in towards the box. Here's the chance and the shot rolling just wide by Tiffany Roberts. Pushing up from the midfield. It was a two on one and perhaps a touch unlucky. Here we're going to get a good look at what Tiffany Roberts does best. She likes to get the ball facing the goal and take on players. Unfortunately, just hits it a bit wide. And again, why was Anson a little hesitant to push the defenders up? He said he doesn't like to play even in the back two on two. He said he will play three on three even in the back, but he doesn't like to go two on two, so he wanted to keep three defenders back. Bell to the middle. Fotopoulos beats the trap. Fotopoulos into the box. Fotopoulos fighting off the defense. Kick saved by Mullenix. End-to-end -end action. The vacation is over for the Carolina keeper. You would think Danielle Fotopoulos at 5'11", 170 pounds, wouldn't have the speed to get in behind Carolina's fast defense, but here we see why she's the career holder of goals in the NCAA. She can get in behind players, and she usually can finish off a goal like that. Six blue jerseys in the area. Fotopoulos off of her head. Yoey to the middle, cleared away by McDowell. The shot by Duran, and finally cleared away. Here's Duran flipping it into the middle. You're going to see Carolina playing with a three back, four in the midfield, and three front. 
They play three flat in the back. Anson traditionally has gone with a sweeper and two marking backs. In 1996, after they lost to Notre Dame, he ended up switching to a flat back three and says it's been one of the best moves he's ever made. And he's traditionally always gone with four in the midfield and three up top. Flipped on, cleared away by Bell. Loose in the midfield, and McDowell controls. Here's Roberts. Roberts against Yohi. And blasted out of danger. Heather Mitz. Harlow on the throw. The topless hesitating a little bit coming back on defense, but the Gator defense holds and Fotopoulos leading the break against Lori Fair. Turns the Carolina defender, fights through. Fotopoulos again going into the box. Stacker rides her off and is whistled for a foul at the edge of the area. The referee's feet inches away. This is exactly what Florida needs from Danielle Fotopoulos. She is their go-to player, and she's taking the responsibility on her Florida's the, her shoulders right now for Florida. Going against Lori Fair is one of the fastest defenders in the country right now, and she's able to go right by her. Lindsey Stacker brings her down right outside the box. I think, Phil, that's a questionable call. If anyone had a grip of anyone, <laughs> Fotopoulos was holding off Stacker, and Meredith Vandenberg, the referee today, not hesitating. This perhaps the chance for the Gators. It's funny how those to grab a lead. Those fouls always seem to, seem to happen outside the box, isn't it? Duran steps over. Roberts out for an early jump. And they'll tee it up and do it again. See if they change it. Fotopoulos, left foot. Fotopoulos, go! A blast off Mullenix's hands, off the crossbar, and the Gators take the lead. A rifle shot. Danielle Fantopoulos continues to set records at the NCAA level, and here we see why. She doesn't even try and bend it around that ball. She's just going to blast it around that ball. And unfortunately for Siri Molinex, the keeper for North Carolina, not quick enough with her reactions, and she doesn't get any help from the post. 118th career goal. Will it be enough to hoist the trophy? And as you pointed out, maybe, maybe, that controversial call just outside the area might be enough to dethrone the Tar Heels. This is such a big goal for Florida because they come in with a lack of psychological edge. They come in knowing that they've never been to this series and they've never been to this championship game versus a team that comes in with 19 previous appearances in the final four weekend. So right there for them, that gives them so much confidence going into the next 85 minutes. Slammed into Parlo. Parlo still on the ball. Parlo to the middle. McDowell just behind. Back to Florence. And the Gators' defense holds. This only the third time all season that North Carolina has trailed the previous two times. Obviously, they won Notre Dame and Duke. But a controversial call to set up the goal. Here we're going to see a little bit of grabbing on both sides, but the angle we see from there looks like Danielle Patopoulos has a hold of Lindsey Stacker. Hard to see from that angle. Cleared away by Gilhart. So some controversy. And the Gators looking to keep those records going. Slammed upfield by Hall, but Stacker intercepts. And into the area for Meredith Flaherty. Ex Meredith McCullen. I guess that's how you got to know her first when she was playing for Clemson, invited to the national team camp, and 
you could see why and with her performance against Santa Clara if it wasn't for Flaherty in goal it would be the Broncos most likely taking on the Tar Heels today. No question about it. Flaherty had a tremendous performance against Santa Clara made a crucial saves off the line not just once a few times in that game. And Becky Burley has talked about it a lot with us saying that her coming over from Clemson from Florida has been crucial to their success this year. Cleared away throw in. Let's take a look. If we can on a. Closer different angle in just a moment. At that foul looks like the referee behind the play might have actually. Had a better view of it show you that in a moment but Mullenix a little bit rattled gives the ball right back to Fotopoulos and North Carolina forced to scramble. Next chance we get. Show you that highlight. Morgman. To the middle. And they're going to call Wambach for the foul and the Tar Heels will take the free kick. Go back to Fotopoulos's charge into the box a different angle this time from behind. And this is a better angle because we can see both of them are doing a bit of grabbing and that's OK. Both of them have got a hold of the shirt and normally what's going to happen is you're going to see exactly what the referee did. The forward is going to get that call. They're going to get the benefit of the doubt. And that's the angle that Vandenberg was seeing and it was obvious that Stacker did have a grab. I have a hold of Fotopoulos's shirt. Here's Parlo as the Tar Heels forced to fight to equalize and good defense in the back by Baxter. Far side throw in North Carolina. We talked about Carolina's 3 4 3. Florida setting up in a more traditional 4 4 2. But Becky Burley has always liked to push up and go to a 3 4 3. So it'll be interesting to see what she does. She talked about before the game wanting to go to a 3 4 3 and playing even in the back against Carolina. It'll be interesting now that they've gone up a goal to see if she still pushes into that attacking offensive style. And she did it against Santa Clara, actually. Even when they went up a goal, she pushed into that 3 4 3. Troy Roberts Roberts against Yohe tries to turn the corner gets the cross to the middle can't find Parlo before it's cleared away by Gilhart and the return header from the backside grabbed by Flaherty World Cup skiing coming your way later today on ESPN 530 Eastern time from Mammoth Mountain California. The women's Super G and women's slalom highlighted again 530 Eastern on ESPN. One nothing. Gators lead it. You can see Carolina trying to find Tiffany Tiffany Roberts their right midfielder isolated on the flank and that's exactly what they need to do against Florida today. See how many players they can isolate 1v1 because speed advantage goes towards Carolina. They have a very fast team and when they can face up and take players on 1v1 they find their most success. Into the middle looking for Fotopoulos. McDowell brought down. Phil, we talked about them playing, playing 150 minutes against Portland, four overtimes. Carolina did. And what also is a disadvantage to them coming into this game is their key personalities are holding nagging injuries. About what you'd expect in the foul department. Side Florence. The nagging injuries I'm talking about. Tiffany Roberts, the right midfielder, all American national team player, comes in with a very sore knee. She says it swells up in, for her in the second half. It's hard to hard for her to run in the second half. Cindy Parlo comes in with a terrible hamstring. She's had problems with all year, hasn't played much of the postseason. Uh, full games, full 90 minutes, and she had to play a lot of minutes in Friday's game. Lori Schwoy, their other attacking center midfielder, who's a key personality for them, comes in with a hamstring pull as well. So three of their key personality players have nagging injuries coming into this game. And again, with just a day's rest, it's not going to get much easier for them. Day's rest and a goal down. Far side. Klugel intercepted. Keisha Bell tries to slam the cross in and wins the throw. Over the past 13 years, nearly 30,000 minutes played by the Tar Heels, they have trailed a grand total of 412 minutes. They're not used to playing from behind. 
Bell a little bit off target. The Gator defense forced to backtrack. Florence, the sophomore from Dallas, fighting the double team, dispossessed by Gilhart, and she'll just slam it away. Anyone who's watched Carolina soccer over the years know that they have a mentality that's hard as nails. They will not give up easily in this game, and they're going to play a full 90 minutes expecting and confident they're, they're going to get a couple goals before this game is over. As we've seen already, though, Patopoulos much more active in the first half than she was against Santa Clara. The concern we had before the game from Florida's perspective would be the speed, especially on the outside of Borgman and Fair, but what Fotopoulos is doing is just letting them run alongside of her. There's no way they're going to get the ball. She's shielding them away. And, and that's the benefit of being 5'11", 170 pounds, is she has such great potential to hold that ball and shield everyone off. It's so hard, and I've played against her many times on the national team, so hard to get the ball off her when she's shielding it with her size. Here's Duran, far side, a gutsy effort playing today as her cross is parried away. Duran, what was it, 24 stitches 24. needed? A head-to-head -head collision in the Florida goal mouth knocked her out of the semifinal. You can see going at it tonight, and when a championship's on the line, I guess you have the entire offseason to rest up. And especially for Duran, in 1996, she had a red shirt with an ACL tear, and she came back the next season, and two games into the season, had another ACL tear in her other knee. So I talked to her before the game today, and she said, with a smile, it's been a long four years, and I was not going to sit out this game, regardless of the 24 stitches. Stacker. Bounce in towards the box. And Tracy Ward will let it run back. Ward, the lone change from the Gators' efforts in the semis. Senior from Safety Harbor, Florida. Out there strictly for defense. She's not registered a goal or an assist this year. One thing Carolina needs to do to stop Florida's offensive attack is they like, Florida likes to send long balls in and target Abby and Danielle Fotopoulos up top. And they will do that through their outside backs, Keisha Bell and Heather Mitts. And so far, they haven't been able to supply enough pressure up top with their three front runners to deny that service. Fair into the middle. Parlo takes a bump. Gilhart dribbles through the box and clears it near side. Nice turn by McDowell. Roberts. Roberts into the box, the cross to the middle. And again, Gilhart just sticks a paw out and grabs it. She's had to make a couple of sprawling stops. Hall running past Fair will slow her down. And Fotopoulos offside. This is one of the dangers of Carolina sending players forward. They're always going to be susceptible to a Florida counterattack. If Florida did well to come out fair, Lori Fair for Carolina doing a good job, however, slowing up Karen Hall, making her play a back pass, letting her whole defense come back. Here we see Tiffany Roberts again being dangerous on the flank, getting in wide and trying to find that seam in the box. That Florida defense, even with four in the back, has been tested by Carolina. And believe me, a 1-0 lead is not safe against this heel squad. Anson Dorrance a little upset on that call. The number one heels. 14 NCAA titles, 15 national championships. In fact, the Florida Gators trying to equal a North Carolina record if they can win here today. More on that later. Here's Lori Fair. Trips up a little bit, but the ball finds Schroy. Searching for Parlo. Good idea. The execution not quite there, but the ball bouncing in the heels favor. Gilhart getting away with a foul in the box, perhaps. And the Gators will clear the area. Schroy to the middle. And Flaherty calls off Bell. Carolina's inline service just not quite on target yet. They're getting in behind, which is the hardest part, but they're not able to find any players in the box. They need to clean up that inline service and try and target some seams in the box where players are running through. Good effort by the Carolina D.
Fair to the outside for Kludel. The Minnesota freshman. Cross to the middle, Yohi. Wambach back to Hall. Gators wearing the traditional blue. And Carolina wearing the home white. Pass to the middle. McDonald. Schwoy. Back to McDonald against Bell. And Keisha Bell plays it safely and just slams it out of play. Keisha Bell having a fantastic season for, for Florida. Only a freshman back there. And she's just been unstoppable this year, setting so much of their play from the back. And she loves to find, like I said before, loves to find the big targets of Danielle Potopoulos and Abby Wambach. Schwoy passing it back to Parla. A little surprised, especially when you consider what Notre Dame tries to do on free kicks and corner kicks to get Parlo in the middle of the area, that it's Parlo that's taking the throw in. Yeah, it's because she has a very long throw, and they like to put her put it right about at that six-yard box if she can get it there. Just McDowell. like we saw with the pick flip. <laughs> Not quite as far. And a shot from Stacker, no problem for Flaherty. The pick flip by Kim Pickup from Santa Clara. She put it at the six. The only thing was the other side of the six. <laughs> I mean, she you threw it about 120. Never seen this before, but the entire stands on this side of the field standing up for a throw in just to watch every single moment as she would flip the ball into the box. But it was still not good enough you're gonna see to give Santa Clara a goal. You're going to see kids all over the nation now killing themselves doing <laughs> the pick flip. A little bit of a pad on those 24 stitches. And Baxter receiving a little bit of treatment. Might be a little bit of blood. And the Gators will play one player down. Return pass. Duran not expecting it. Flugel, Parlo, Gilhart back into the middle for, for Florida. Baxter will have to wait until there's a stoppage. The referee, according to the FIFA rules, required to actually take a look and make sure the blood has stopped before she's allowed back on the field. So at this point, the Gators just playing a player down. You can see right there, Phil, the dimension Raven McDonald's adds to Carolina's front three. She is all over the place defensively, and she's a nuisance to that back four for Florida, and she's constantly making them when they're looking for that service, making them rush their service, and what happens is it makes the job so much easier and life so much easier for Carolina's midfield and defense because that service is coming in inconsistent, and it's easier to intercept, of course. Nice tackle. Cleared away. Tracy Ward stopping that charge. Baxter is back out on the field, so the two teams at even strength. Almost 21 minutes gone. The goal in the sixth minute as Danielle Fotopoulos brought down just outside the area. The ensuing free kick slammed off of Mullenix's hands, off the crossbar and in the net, and the Gators taking the lead. Parlo. Schroy. Looking for Roberts in the corner and just too much on it. Greensboro, North Carolina. The site of the Women's College Cup championship game. The Gators with the 1-0 lead against North Carolina. Glad you could join us today on a gorgeous day. Phil Shane, Julie Foudy with you. Witnessing a little bit of history this weekend. The Florida in this first 20 minutes has done a great job of keeping the game condensed defensively so they can get a lot of bodies around the ball and put some pressure on these skilled, talented players from Carolina to make them make quick decisions. Would have been offside. And the resulting rebound and pass is offside. However, the game looks to be opening up a bit. And as that opens up, you can see what happens. Tiffany Roberts can go at the fence. Lori Schwoy has time to play, make and get people in. Florence Ward had a hand on the jersey. No foul call. Gilhart 
guides it out of bounds. It will be a corner kick for Carolina. We saw a lot of these corner kicks in the last game, UNC versus Portland, and we saw Cindy Parlow. No one really able to mark her up man v man because of her height advantage. Here, you're going to see Abby Wambox pulled back from the front line to come back and mark Cindy Parlow one on one. McDowell out of play. It'll be a goal kick, but a timeout on the field. The Florida Gators, in only their fourth year of existence, leading the mighty Tar Heels of North Carolina in the Women's College Cup Final. One up in Gators in the first. NCAA history, 1996, looking for a 13th NCAA crown in double overtime. Debbie Keller, 111 minutes in, wins the crown for North Carolina. A 1-0 victory over Notre Dame. It's 1-0 Gators over the Tar Heels today, and this is how it happened. Flashback to the sixth minute. Danielle Fotopoulos stepping up with her left foot, and she doesn't even try and bend this ball. She gets some serious pace on that ball. Siri Molnix not able to, to, to uh, react quick enough, gets a hand on the ball, but she knocks it off the post into the goal. Fotopoulos in the sixth, her 118th goal as she puts more distance between herself and the legendary Mia Hamm. And take a look what they've been able to do today. That's much more active than Fotopoulos was against Santa Clara in the first half of the semifinal. The player who somewhat disappeared offensively is the freshman, Abby Wambach, but they have the lead, and now the job is to hold on. And, but that's the beauty of having Abby Wambach up top because they're both 5'11". We've talked about their size, and they just can't mark out Danielle Fotopoulos. Abby Wambach takes a lot of defensive pressure off Danny. She draws a lot of players, and that opens up space for Danny as well. So even though she may not be touching the ball out, she's still drawing a lot of attention. Cleared away by Flaherty. Stacker to the middle. Roberts wins the battle, but the header back towards the Carolina goal. As you can see, one of the biggest stories is Danielle Boardman has ridden to the turf. Boardman having to play a lot more defense today than she did against Portland. The first half, she was attacking the pilot's net a lot up this right flank, which allowed Tiffany Roberts to push up even that much more into the attack. But today, the Gators keeping her honest. And she comes into this game with a badly bruised thigh. She has a contusion to her right thigh and so left thigh. And so talking with their trainer, Prentice, he wasn't sure how much she could go today, but he said she will start. And we see she's, she looks to be doing great so far. Meredith, make that... Uh, Baxter, Aaron Baxter, had to change jerseys because of the blood, so she's now wearing number 32 instead of her usual number 23. Littleton, Colorado senior, All-American. And an anchor in the midfield, along with Karen Hall. And those two are clogging up that North Carolina attack. Harlow. Nice pass to McDonald. Schwoy. And Fair forced to backtrack. Florence. Bell on defense for Florida. Pulled to the turf. The whistle blows and a free kick for Florida. North Carolina, plenty of national teamers on this, plus the goal score today for Florida. The U.S. fighting to regain the Women's World Cup, and you can watch their efforts next year. ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. Borgman can't even clear the area. Loose in the box, and Roberts left foots it out of danger. Offside. The Florida Gators not back quickly enough. 
Of course, the Women's World Cup efforts already well underway. Just a couple more qualifying games to determine the 16th and final team, Mexico against Argentina. will play in a home-and-home -home series for that final spot. The U.S., Norway, Germany, and Chicago already seeded, and we'll find out who plays who. February 14th, here's Florence. Over quickly Ward, the shot towards the back post, and it handcuffs Flaherty. Looks like she wanted to let that one go by her, but had a change of thought. Shoy doing a good job in the midfield for Carolina, setting play. A lot of play goes through her, like we talked about. She's going to keep the ball moving, keep it switching around. Did a good job, fake like she was going to go right on that one. Found the inside instead. Just about 18 minutes left in the first half. Schwoy to Boardman. Stacker to Fair. Outside to Klugel. Stolen away. Durant's pass off target. And here's Schwoy. To the middle for Parlo. Pressured by Mitz, forces the deflection, and Bell just blasts it upfield. This field they're playing on today, Phil, is a very large field, 120 by 75, which plays into the hands of North Carolina's style. However, it's a bit of a disadvantage with their legs. So you can see they're opening up nicely, but when it comes down to the very final pass, you're seeing a lot of tired legs out there. Florida playing on this as the back pass going into the box and picked up by Flaherty and the infraction should actually be in the area where Flaherty picked it up unless there was another foul called behind the play. Lori Fair getting set to restart it. To the back post. And Klugel cannot keep it in play. And the Gators can breathe again. Goal kick for Flaherty. Kicking into the mat the Tar Heels. Number 17, Beth Shepard. Beth Shepard coming into the game for Jenna Klugel. And Shepard tends to lean towards the middle of the field for the most part, a central midfielder. And let's see who they might put back on the outside. Looks like they're going to drop back Raven McDonald to the outside and push Lori Schwoy into the attack. So we talked about this in the semis for Portland, but this perhaps somewhat of the danger is the pass almost picked off by Parlo. She gets the feed from Shepard and a great slide from Gilhart knocks it away the Carolina faithful appealing for a penalty they're not going to get it Gilhart coming up a little lame on that effort that was a great effort by Gilhart to recover and still with the tackle she gets a bit of Cindy Parlo but she gets the ball first that is the key there I think that's a good no call by the referee not just the depth that Carolina has but the versatility of the players when a player comes in it's not just for another player, but other players will switch around and could cause some problems as this shot sails wide from Florence. Yeah, Anson rarely subs position for position, and it's something that he did very well against Portland, is he'll bring a player in and he'll swap about three players around. And what that does, Phil, is it, it, it makes Florida have to think, okay, first you think you have your player all sorted out, you know what their tendencies are, you know where their weaknesses are, and all of a sudden now you're playing against a whole new player and playing against someone that you have to figure out all over again. And so it confuses the defense for a bit and keeps Florida on its toes. A couple of substitutions again for Carolina. Raquel Carvelson entering the game. Florence will take a seat, and Ann Ramey, the freshman from Norman, Oklahoma, enters for Cindy Parlow. Parlo's first half is over with 14 minutes left and change. Shepard ridden off the ball. Baxter into the attack. Yohe trying to sprint past 
Lori Fair, the shot to the back post, and Mullenix just pushes it. The referee was thinking about calling a foul, but she let advantage play, and Yohe almost scored. And this is what Yohe provides for Florida. She's a speedy flank player that can get around the defense, and here we see another great opportunity for Florida, and she was able to put that one away against Santa Clara in the last game. Into the middle. Over Fotopoulos, punch to the back post. Yohe the volley over the bar. And as you can see, the difference in the styles we were talking about before the game, sprints directly towards the goal from Yohe and Fotopoulos have led to the best chances for Florida, while North Carolina trying to spread the ball around. Here we're going to see another look. She does a good job by getting her body in between the ball and Lori Fair, the defender. She just cuts it a little wide. Her angle wasn't so good. Might have been a better option to pull that one back because it looked like Danny Fotopoulos was trying to get in on the near post. Of course, you can never really fall to forward for striking towards goal. No, by no means. You always want them looking to shoot as often as possible. That's always been one of the weaknesses, I think, with American soccer. You can't find enough players to go forward and really attack and really take the responsibility on their own shoulders. Attention Katie Tullis lining up at the NBA left midfield for Florida, Rose. slamming that towards Mullenix. Ramey. McDonald. And both teams pretty even in the attack. The only number that really counts, though, the number one on the board for Florida. Metopolis giving chase. Stacker heading it back. Thirty three minutes gone. The goal in the sixth minute off a free kick from Danielle Fotopoulos. Stacker intercepted as Tullis, who just entered the game in perfect position. Senior from Altamonte Springs played considerable minutes in the semifinal. Could have been a handball against Boardman. That's what Yohe's screaming about. The referee was shielded, though. Yohe brings such a great dimension to Florida's front line. We see Abby Wambach substituted out. And Yohe, what she provides up top is that speed. You have the big targets of Danielle and Abby. And now with Yohe, you're going to get a lot of pressure on the back line of, of Carolina. And you're going to get her going at the defense. So not only is she playing back to goal, she's going to be getting in behind the defenders. Ramey, well handled by the Gator defense. Ramey, the freshman, came in late and provided a spark actually hit the post on a shot against Portland in overtime and sent a couple of shots just wide the only player able to find the net in 150 minutes was Florence McDowell is down after that head-to-head -head collision with Tullis both players are shaken and Ramey is another one of the freshmen for Carolina that's come in and done such a great job this year a high school All-American and they really have a fantastic freshman class. Danielle Borgman, another one of those in the back. Head to head. Shades of the 24 stitch encounter, which knocked Duran out of the semifinals. Actually, looked like might have been an elbow. The clock stopped with just under 11 minutes left to go in the first half of play. Looks like it's a contusion to the thigh, like she got hit in the thigh, which is a problem for quite a number of Carolina players out there today. And you can see Prentice, their trainer, working on her. And Rebecca McDowell, the player down, is someone that is the general in their midfield. She plays in a deeper scene behind Laura Schwoy, but she really loves to run and run and run, and they need her in there. She's a four-time state cross-country champion and so she is not afraid of running and she's one of the players that will play considerable minutes and she did just a couple of days ago you could see them checking the flexibility of that knee almost as though they're afraid that there might have been a sprain it looks like she will limp her way off take a look back at the replay and looks like the knee might have buckled as we take a closer look look at the left leg right there the collision swung the knee out. So in a way, she's a little lucky that that happened in the air rather than on the ground, but she is going to the sideline. 
under her own power. That's a good sight. And McDowell looks like she's not even going to take the substitution. Looks like she's going to try and come back in herself. Headed towards Flaherty and again quick off the line. That's so crucial for Florida today is Flaherty coming off her line quick. She did a great job against Santa Clara doing that. And that is such a help to your back four when you can have your keeper coming off the line cleaning up those through balls. Here's Boardman on her first foray into the attack today. Boardman to the middle if she can. Boardman the shot to the back post but she couldn't get anything on it. And no problem for the Florida keeper. What a danger she is coming forward. She's just got lightning speed. Fotopoulos spins Roberts down. Roberts comes up with a smile and Fotopoulos will get a talking to. A little bit of frustration by the Gator front runner. You can see Florida's tactic coming into this game is fairly obvious. Let's put some bodies on them and play a physical game. That plays right into their hands and that's going to be their game plan today. You've got a battered and tired Carolina team and Florida's going to try and constantly be applying some physical pressure and getting a body on them. Clear to white. Throw in. And that's the type of player that Tiffany Roberts can be. Just enough of a pest defensively. But as you've been able to see already today, She's much more dangerous pushing down the flanks and getting crosses in. They just need someone to find a head on it in the box. Carvelson's toss headed back to the middle towards the top of the box. Roberts into the area. McDowell blocked off the ball and cleared back to midfield. Lori Fair, 35 appearances for the U.S. national team. Her entry pass, finding Schroy and her kick over the bar. Still 1-0, Gators lead at about nine minutes left to go. Later today, 3.30 Eastern time from Orlando, Florida. It's the Honda Elite Four, Duke against Tennessee. Nationally matched, nationally ranked matchup again, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. You see Shoy playing up top for Carolina, and it's a position she actually started at coming into Carolina as a freshman, and had always played in high school, and Anson Dorrance decided he wanted to make her an attacking central midfielder. So he switched the two, her and Cindy Parlow. Cindy Parlow went up top, and he says, ever since he's done that, he think it was the best thing he's done for his team. So you can see with him bringing her back up top, I think what he's trying to get out of that is a bit of possession up top. He wants to hold the ball. She's not the type of player to get in behind defenses. She'll hold the ball for Carolina up top. Here's Roberts again, causing some havoc down the flank. And winning a corner kick. Now you're going to see Dan Danny Fotopoulos come back. She's going to mark Cindy Parlow, be the target for her, and mark her man on man. Actually, Cindy Parlow isn't in, so she's going to probably take Lindsay Stacker, their second best header. To the six. Glanced away. Back post. Roberts. The shot. Saved by Flaherty. Still loose and blocked away. It was just deflected inside the six, and Roberts with a lightning strike and another brilliant save by Flaherty. This is a brilliant save because remember, Meredith Flaherty has to see through about four other players when this shot comes in. So her view is obstructed here. She comes out, doesn't get a piece of it. Lori Fair does a good job cutting the ball back and putting it on target, and Flaherty there quick with the reaction save. Lori Fair actually taking the shot on the backside and actually a little unlucky not to put that one in the net North Carolina starting to express their dominance Gators making one change Melissa Pini is on the field for Tracy Ward and that's the extra midfielder and it looks like Becky Burley, the Gators coach, might be trying to push a little bit more into the attack. And yes, indeed, Duran on the run. They'll call a foul or offside. Offside the call again against the Gators. They're fourth. Last six minutes of the half, both teams are going to be feeling their legs. 
so important for Florida right now to keep the psychological edge and keep them out of their net. They need to keep the score 1-0 going into halftime because that is such a confidence boost going into the second half, especially for such a young team like Florida, only in their fourth year as a program. In the middle for Yohi, looking for Fotopoulos. And Fotopoulos actually keeping up rather closely with the speedy Boardman. Molinix, a tough ball to handle and cleared away for the throw. All pressured. Peeney, the cross, almost on net. Somewhat of a miscue, but almost caught Mullenix <laughs> so, napping. Sometimes those are some of your nicest goals right there. Peeney on the outside is coming off the bench. She's the one who got the second assist against Santa Clara. Just trying to put it in the box for one of their big towers up top. Hits it a bit wide. A lot of times goalkeepers playing the odds, already cheating away. As you pointed out, a lot of goalies have been burned on a miss hit like that. We had a player at Stanford, Dina Day, who was the master at those. <laughs> miss kicks? <laughs> she'd, she'd kick them in and say, they, oh, what a goal. I said, that was a cross, Dina. <laughs> Come on. Fair giving chase. Doesn't matter. It all counts the same, right? <laughs> Bell. Forced to track back and again playing it safe. Just under four and a half to go in the first half of play. Carlson on the turn. The shot straight on target, but the foul had been called. And just outside the area. The clock continues to tick and. You can hear the Tar Heel players screaming for the freshman Ann Ramey to get the ball back for the free kick. You see Florida even turning up their physical pressure against the heels. This would be Cindy Parlow territory, but she's out. Let's see what Carvelson can do and the deflection out for a corner. Carvelson, they call their super sub at Carolina. For four years, she's come off the bench for them and been such a great offensive producer for them. She scores a lot of big goals and a lot of key assists for them. And she's always come off the bench at many other programs. She would be a starter. To the six, headed away by Hall. Duran giving chase against Roberts. Carolina keeps it in. McDowell. Carvelson could have been a handball on McDonald. Play on. Ramey in the middle. The freshman to the right foot. Deflected and just carried wide. Flaherty had no right to get a hand on that ball, but a superhuman effort to push it wide. You can see Meredith Flaherty is fired up for this game. Here you see another great, brilliant save all the way outstretched, and the range of her is magnificent. She can cover that whole goal, and again, she has obstructed view for so many players in the box. Deflected away. Fotopoulos back on defense. Shepard's entry pass is cleared high into the stands. What a lot of people don't see at home, Phil, is that whole play started with Rebecca McDowell, and she is their worker in the midfield. She came in sliding in, fought that ball, won that tackle, and started that play. And that's the thing that she's so underrated for. She can work and win balls. Every ball you'll see today, she'll be around scrapping for it. And the key for Carolina today is can they outscrap Florida on those second balls? Another free kick. As you look at McDowell. None the worse for wear from that collision earlier in the half. This looks like a pass to the top of the six. Still loose. Schwoy couldn't get a foot to it. Fair tries the volley. And finally the Gators, deep in the bunker, just push it out of play. 90 seconds left to go here in the first half. And when we get to the halftime festivities, take a look at one of the latest UNC stars. All-American Cindy Parlow, stats and highlights from the first half, including Danielle Fotopoulos' goal, could be a championship clincher. 
There's the all-time leading score, fighting for the loose ball. Duran pressuring fair, and Mullenix will get the pass back. One minute left in the first half. The Gators almost look a little rattled. They can afford to be. They have the lead, but a lot of times, even when they do have time, they're half expecting a Carolina player to be right in their face. Thirty seconds left. Troy tripped up. Play on. Hall with the ball for Florida. Would be offside. No. Boardman keeping Yohe onside, but the pass went to the middle. Boardman playing it safe. Mullenix is out of her goal mouth at the moment. Ten seconds left in the half. And it looks like it will end in midfield. North Carolina looking for a 16th national title. But they'll have to come back from behind in the second half to do it. Siri Mullenix beaten on a 20-yard blast outside the box by that player, Danielle Fotopoulos, and Flaherty keeping the Gators in the lead. Florida, one half away from their first national title. Can they hold on?